my insightful idea is that it's possible to pull interesting insight and trend from social media when it's analyzed spatially. And I have three minutes to get you excited about this idea. Earlier this year, the people of southern Sudan were given the opportunity to turn the page on the past and write a new chapter in history. The world not only watched as the polls for the Sudan referendum opened and ballots were cast, but we talked about it on social networks. This became kind of a, a collective conversation, primarily concentrated in urban centers around the world. Looking at this event through time, we can see almost the moment when this message goes viral. And there it is, tip, the tipping point. 6 p.m. local Sudan time. In the United States, we're getting up, the Europeans are just finishing work, and in Sudan, the polls have just closed. Oops. We can also look at tweets per capita and discover countries that have a higher than normal interest in this event. Norway helped broker the Sudan peace deal of 2005, which ended the civil war and led to this referendum. Australia was an international polling location, and since these guys are the first to wake up, they were some of the first to cast the ballots for freedom. Venezuela and Sudan kind of seem like an odd pair, but in fact, these countries recently built embassies in each other's capitals, solidifying their relationship. In the United States, it's Arizona, Texas, Kansas, Kentucky, and New York that stand out as having an interest. Why? These are the states with a high number of Sudanese refugees. Now, we can also dig deeper into the content of the message and discover tweets that contain an original idea. Now, this type of analysis and results is extremely valuable to, among others, public safety officials who are responding in the time of crisis. In addition, we can uncover retweets of those original ideas, as well as messages that um, contain a reference to mass media. So it's these messages that by far dominated during the Sudan referendum, contributing 79% to the, of tweets to the Twitter sphere. So if it's these people that are consuming and spreading that mass media message, who is it that's that's shaping and influencing and controlling that flow of information. New York Times, Sudan Monitor, and Al Jazeera English. Three news organizations helped shape what over 20,000 people said about the Sudan referendum over the course of seven days. Now, that's all the time I have, but I'd like to leave you with the idea that analyzing crowdsource data through both space and time can lead you to powerful new insights.